Hi, back to the uh, Super Syntex podcast. With me is DJ Ramirez and Chad Ro- Chad Conine. I don't know what I'm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> how are y'all? One time, Coach Bechtel at Midway called you uh, Brad, right? When I was in high school, huh? Did he call you Brad? No, uh, no, no, no. That was something else. But he was talking to the team, and I was a student, you know, student reporter, and. He said, I want y'all to make sure y'all y'all, y'all think Chad Bromine, he's really working Bro hard. <laughs> Chad Bromine. <laughs> Some of the guys told me about that. It was, uh, that's pretty funny. Was, mm-hmm. DJ, Cook, how are you? I'm surviving. It's going to be a long day. So. <laughs> hey, you got ACL Fest ahead of you this weekend, though, yeah. right? So. Looking, looking forward to that, but that's probably why today and tomorrow are going to be really long days because I'm trying to get all my work done before I leave. Hey, it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. Oh, nice. And we're into it. Mm. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> last year, three of our C schools, uh, that would be China Spring, Crawford, and Chilton, uh, combined to go 27 and 11. This year they have more losses than that right now. Uh they are a combined two and twelve. Um, but they've all got good coaches. In fact, uh Tyler Beatty and Benny Hewitt, two very recent our last two super syntax coaches, coaches of the year, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh and I would say Greg Jacobs at, at Crawford, heck of a coach. Um plus they've got a few promising players out there, so the season is not over yet. Which of these three C schools has the best chance to get an A, to make the playoffs and maybe even win some games in the playoffs? That's a good twist. That, yeah. I don't, that wasn't even in the script. You just kind of came that up with that on the fly. <laughs> right? Uh, I mean, it, obviously, I think China Spring – kind of has some of those tools, right? Um, honestly, the thing with China Spring is they get into it pretty tough the first week and the second week because they got Connolly La Vega the first two weeks mm-hmm. of district play. So they're going to really get a challenge and, and, and uh, you know, and then and after that, they're still going to have those Robinson Rockets out there, right? And mm-hmm. Chilton... Uh, Chilton's off to a rough start in their district already because they lost to Gold. I mean, they got smoked by Goldthwaite on Friday, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so which school? <laughs> that only leaves Crawford, you know. Crawford plays Marlin next week, I believe. Is that right? Yeah. I feel like Crawford does have a better chance at kind of turning things around. Obviously, everybody's had a tough schedule um, and they've all got – each of these teams has like young players and they've got, you know, a bit of a learning curve. Um, but I feel like if, if Marlin plays the way that I saw them play the other night, then some of these other schools in that district have a chance to, you know, beat them if, you know, they don't kind of clean some of those things up. Uh, and even then I feel like Rosebud lot has been on a tear and, uh, so, you know, like Crawford's had, you know, some injuries, some obviously they played really tough schools. Um, I feel like at best they finished third, right? Um, but yeah, China Springs, the rest of those teams in that district are looking better and better each week. Uh, and China hasn't, other than that Bass Drop game, which was still there were still some things there that you could be concerned about. They haven't really put a whole game together. And then Chilton's I just got finished talking to Coach Hewitt actually this morning. They're really young and you know they're coming off of a season where they, you know, obviously they played really deep into the playoffs and they lost a lot of veterans and a lot of seniors. And they also came into this year losing their, you know, Six hundred yard rushing back. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're you know Semtex newcomer of the year. Um, so that's a big difference not having to Corian Evans. Um, I think they might have a chance to win a game or two, 
in their district, but uh, it's kind of an uphill battle, and they're playing Mart this week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dad? Yeah, you know, like I jumped in a minute ago and, and made the point about China Spring, and, and, and you know, that district, like, like DJ said, looks really good. Connolly has lost two in a row, and so China Spring opening with Connolly, it's kind of like, you know, the winner of that game has a chance to feel pretty good about itself, but the the one that doesn't win is, is going to, you know, they're going to be staring at a losing streak, maybe some self-searching a little bit, and, and and with a lot of tough games left. Um, and, you know, Crawford, uh, you know, Crawford, you just feel like at some point Crawford is going to be Crawford, you know, but DJ makes a good point. When you got young teams, when, when, you, when you're not where you used to be, I guess sometimes, you know, maybe you're thinking, you know, down the road, like who can we develop for the future? So I look at both of these districts, uh, the Crawford and China Spring ones, and say basically you need two games. You need to win two mm -hmm. games to get in, to get fourth at least, you know. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Which two are they going to be? Right. Uh, in Crawford's case, I think – even a down Crawford team, we probably look at, at as a favorite over Bruce Villetti and Moody. Um, mm -hmm. Bruce Villetti looks like it's playing better. Good for the Eagles, for sure. Uh, but, I mean, I you know, I think when it gets to the picks box that week, we're probably all taking Crawford. That's a good point. Uh, so, you know, I feel like Crawford has a pretty good chance of getting in. And then it becomes, do those games against – Centerville and Hamilton really start paying off at that point. You've mm -hmm. played you've played some tough teams. Maybe by that point you're building a little confidence, you're building a little continuity and maybe you can win, you know, a couple games. Well, I think that's the case. You know, having had that tough schedule, I think that comes into play even uh even this week against Marlin. Yeah. Next week against Marlin. For sure. Absolutely. Well, you kind of referenced it there, but it is a light week for mm -hmm. the schedule. Uh, teams in six team districts are taking their bye weeks uh, before district play begins. I think I saw Greg Tepper at Texas Football put out a tweet like, I don't know, I think it was like over 20% of the schools in the state are taking a bye week this week. It's a lot of schools. Um but we do still have district games happening, actually, on the schedule. So those are happening in the likes of the bigger districts, like District 12-6A, uh, District 7-2A Division One, and District 10-2A Division Two. That would be uh, the Midway District, the Axtell District, and the uh, Mar District. Um, <clears throat> so which of this week's games in those districts do you feel like might have the most impact on the district championship race or maybe just even the playoff race? Is there a game out there that strikes you? Um, well, I'm just going to go in order, I guess for 12, six, a, uh, since temple's not playing this week, um, uh, that kind of leaves it up to the Schumacher, uh, midway game and Harker Heights at Killeen. I feel like Harker Heights has a, if they if they play if they keep playing solid, they're gonna you know take that one. I feel like you know. Um, maybe let me just jump in here. Uh, Harker Heights has got some speed, y'all. I mean they <laughs> they have two backs that are just blazers, and mm -hmm. uh, and Midway had a hard time. Um, as good as that defense has been for Midway, it it got exposed a little bit against Harker Heights. Go yeah. on, DJ. Yeah, I feel like that Midway's game this week is going to be a real, you know, benchmark because for me, you know, Midway, Shoemaker, Harker Heights, and Temple are the four playoff teams out of that district. Mm. So I feel like whoever takes, you know, the top two is going to be decided off of, you know, this game, Midway versus Shoemaker, and then when Midway plays Temple – um, and then uh, obviously if, if when Harker Heights plays Temple, because I feel like, you know, Temple's kind of been back on their game. So, um, and then for 7-2A, Axel and Italy are the two teams that are going to end up 1-2. Um, but this week is really going to be, I think, the decider. Axel has Valley Mills, who, you know, has beat them last year in the playoffs. And mm -hmm. they're kind of, 
a little bit of their kryptonite in terms of they're really strong up front. Axel has the speed, but if they can't get past that, you know, those big guys up front, it's going to be a little bit tough for them. Um, Valley then, Mills is their kryptonite and they wear green. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, uh, you know, obviously Valley Mills has, you know, also some turnover. They also lost some guys after last season. And, you know, you could see some of that youth in their non-district schedule, but I feel like they're kind of settling in now. So, um, you know, you can't really count them out. Um, and then Rio Vista has also been on the come up this season. So, you know, if, if Italy takes care of business against them, it's really going to come down to, you know, Italy versus Axtell to decide who's at the top of that district. Um, Itasca has a bye. I don't know why y'all picked Itasca over Bosqueville last week because, mm -hmm. like, I, Bosqueville didn't play – barely anyone in the non-district and sure they're better they're talking trash and she's third in the picks look that's okay look, hey you know showing some life i'm just right. saying <laughs> there are so, there are some times where i'm just like surprised. what are they doing what are they doing yeah I, yeah i look at some of y'all's picks and think the same thing <laughs> um I'm well, not going to say, right, like, obviously, sometimes I just pick off of vibes, but <laughs> anyway. I feel um, like the Wampus Cats, like, they show you a little, right? And then and then, they, and then it doesn't really pan out sometimes. Yeah, they're yeah. a little inconsistent. For sure. Yeah. Uh, Do you have a final Martins point on that, on that Worth and Bremont, Mark Chilton district? Um, I mean. Because I have thoughts. All right. <laughs> Let's get to your thoughts. Uh, you know, a Shoemaker Midway game, it's they might still both make the playoffs, but the loser of that game is gonna be 0-2 in district, right? Correct. And that's not a good that's not a good feeling. And I think those are two pretty good teams. I right? agree. Yeah. yeah. So uh so, so somebody needs to win that one, kind of like I said for the China Spring Connolly game. Somebody needs to win that one just to help their feelings, right? Um the uh, I'm covering Axel at Valley Mills on on Friday night, so you know that's it's just a good small town football. But I'm not sure there's a whole lot of implications involved. Um, po possibly, you know, for Valley Mills, they could get a big leg up if they could beat the district favorite. Uh, but but the the Mart the Mart district. I mean, let's just call it the Mart district because they still rule. You know what's going on. <laughs> now. They showed the other night they beat Bremon. Uh, and um, I think Bremont is going to get back on winning track and, and win that game this week. But he, here's the game. Here's the game. This is the dark horse to have an impact, right? Okay. Meridian at Frost. Oh, my right? gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that is a pretty dark horse. Yeah, I know. I, know. I can't but, even but see that out. horse. <laughs> but, hear me, but hear me out. Okay. If Meridian wins this game, they're going to be 2-0 and in district, right? Yeah, and beat Hubbard. You're correct. Right. And 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 as weird as it sounds to say, the way Chilton is playing, there's no reason. I mean, it's not an absolute that Chilton is good that Meridian can't beat Chilton, right? Oh, that I mean, as crazy as that sounds, yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't I don't I'm not gonna invest all my money in Meridian, you know. <laughs> but good call. <laughs> But if they beat Frost and they're at two and zero in district, and they probably need just need to win one more game, and we've got the Meridian Yellow Jackets in the playoffs, right? Yeah. And so yeah. that that's and the same thing with Frost. Though, that Frost wins that game, and there's some games out there that they can win. But I, I think we said all along that you know third and fourth and fifth and sixth in that district are going to be pretty interesting, even if it's not you know juggernaut football teams playing for those spots. Yeah. I think you all you both make some good points. Uh, I'm gonna go back to the Shoemaker Midway game for just a second. Um, as you as you guys said, I think both are pretty good teams, um, but you really don't want to get to zero and two in district because that's when you start sweating a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. because now mm -hmm. you're like, "Ooh, we got work to do." Um, I think I think Midway needs to handle this game, take care of business, and I think they probably will. Um, I do 
DJ listed, you know, the probable four playoff teams in that district as Midway Temple, Harker Heights, and, and Shoemaker. I think that's probably right. That said, a, a big game probably down the road for that is probably Shoemaker and Bryan. Because the Bryan Vikings probably have something to say. They're a little feisty. They got they got some, you know, they're all right. So uh, we'll see how that one comes out. Um, but, yeah, it's a big game for both the Wolves and the Panthers this week at, at Panther Stadium. Um, so, <clears throat> Chad, you mentioned it, but uh, DJ, obviously you're headed to uh, ACL this week this weekend that should be fun look at chat got the guitar <laughs> good lord <laughs> so chad said we should have a music edition of the podcast we had a fantasy football edition of the podcast uh and in honor of the late great chris, chris christopherson look at him he's already picking <laughs> uh, so chris christopherson excuse me uh died last saturday uh, just a legendary artist. Uh, yeah, the, one of songwriter. the great songwriters of all time. Yeah, excellent yeah. songwriter. Um, so we didn't do a music-related podcast, but I am giving you a music-related question. Um, <laughs> I can't hardly keep it together. Um, so if you could pick an artist uh, that would pair up nicely with one of our Central Texas teams. Um, you notice I didn't uh, put it in any specific genre. You may pick from whatever genre you are comfortable with. Uh, who would that artist be? Who's the good match there? And maybe even if they have a song that would work for that team too. That, there's there's probably a lot of songs that would work for teams, but there's an obvious answer to this question. Do you guys know what the obvious answer there, to this question well, is? Hey, Chad, there are like three obvious answers to this question. Are there though? Are there? Hey, because let me tell you, there's 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 at least three country artists who went to Central Texas schools. OK, OK. Three. All right. Fair enough. But but do any of them top the great Willie Nelson? None of them top Willie Nelson. Because like when Abbott opened their stadium last week, how did they not? How did they miss on having Willie Nelson come, you know, uh, <laughs> perform just to kind of properly christen the thing? Abbott, you know? or, uh, Willie Nelson actually played football. At Abbott. Yeah, at Abbott. Yeah, yeah, I know. So uh, I think he didn't have a helmet either. Like that was that was the old days. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, was a while yeah. Ago. Sure. yeah. Well, uh, and then the the other one, my other my other like, okay, so the Robinson Rockets could probably have some some good ones, uh, some some good options for like their team band. But I'm gonna go with uh, the Eagles playing Valley Mills. You know the, I the like Eagles it. represent. The you know because you know. Uh, uh so which eagle song valley you... mills is kind of like you can see a guy standing on the corner and valley mills kind of like standing on the corner in winslow arizona right yeah 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 so which which uh, uh so uh, okay i got you then you, you just mentioned the song that you would probably uh give them to yeah take it easy and valley take mills right yeah. yeah no but okay so the other two country artists are Wade Bowen at Riker and Pat Green at, at Vanguard? Vanguard, yeah. So uh, Pat Green went to Vanguard. Uh, and, of course, his biggest hit was probably Wave on Wave, uh, early 2000s. Good song. I really love that song. Uh, that I, I don't. If Vanguard's not playing Wave on Wave at, at their games, I mean, why aren't you? <laughs> I mean, like, it makes perfect sense. I personally say, so... We're getting deep into the weeds here, but uh, <laughs> like at Oklahoma State games, they play Garth Brooks because Garth went to Oklahoma State, and they so they play mm -hmm. friends in mm -hmm. low places. Usually, I think it's near the end of the third quarter, beginning of the fourth quarter. Everybody, you know, gets loud, gets rowdy. It's fun. Uh, well, OU has started doing like a little Toby Keith uh, medley. He's an OU guy. Um. So I'm not sure why Baylor is not doing a Willie Nelson thing. Like he, <laughs> he went to he went to Baylor for like a semester or two before he dropped out. <laughs> probably probably for you know smoking some kind of funky tobacco. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, they should be playing like a Willie Nelson medley at Baylor. 
I don't know why they're they're missing the boat there. Anyway, uh, DJ, you got some thoughts? Well, I mean, I feel like I I listen to a completely different style of music than y'all do. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. I'm racking my brain. All I can think about was when I went to go interview the Trojans at the beginning of the season, they were playing Miley Cyrus party in the USA in the locker room. <laughs> I told hey, I got a kick up last night. I was at, at, at Crawford Volleyball and, and they started their warm out warm up with uh, Motley Crue's Kickstart My Heart, which is, you know, that's a 90s favorite of mine. Uh, Crawford, a lot of these volleyball games, they've got the music, you know, jamming during warm ups and those girls will dance, they'll sing. They're into <laughs> it, man. It's great. I love it. So, DJ, uh, who, who are some of your little. Uh, who are who like who are you looking forward to at ACL? Oh, okay. Um, this lineup was actually kind of like a, a, you know, kind of bare bones. Like Friday's the big day. Like I'm gonna go see Foster the People. You know, they sing Pump the Kicks, and then uh, Blink One Eighty Two was playing at the same time as Chris Stapleton. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to split my time there. <laughs> um, And then, That, yeah, maybe Chris Stapleton and Blink eighty one eighty two could do a collaboration. oh, 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 oh! I had I had another answer on this. If 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 the Outlaws aren't coming onto the field to Chris Stapleton's Outlaw State of Mind, they're doing it wrong. <laughs> the Central Texas <laughs> Outlaws. <laughs> yeah, we're coming up with some good uh, walk up music here. Yeah, I don't know. I'd seen. Uh, aren't Blink you also seeing the Foo Fighters, DJ? That was last year. That was Oh. great. I had to camp out, but it was worth it because I was like literally maybe 30 feet from the stage. Obviously, like there was a railing and then there was the VIP section, which is boring as, you know, those people just pay so that they can be up front. They're not even having fun. Mm -hmm. You Um, know, the thing about ACL Fest is like if you want, like you said, camp out and, and, and stake out your space on the railing, mm -hmm. like it's You have like to watch being, a bunch of it's other people being that in a you small don't. closet with eight strangers for eight hours, you know, like because every, everything gets packed in and you can't move. Right. You can't go get a drink or you'll lose your spot. You'll never get back up there. One year at ACL Fest. I hung around. I watched like Franz Ferdinand and maybe like, uh, uh, oh, anyway, some other band in Franz Ferdinand. But Coldplay was like the headliner on that stage that night. And I was maybe 50 yards, like kind of catty corner from stage left. And by the time Coldplay went on, I was trying to look around people's heads to see the video board above the stage. Like that's how like crowded and just like impossible to see anything that, that it got. So Yeah, that that does ACL not. Fest, that's a that's a job That in does and of not itself. sound like an advertisement for ACL. <laughs> it's worth it in the sense of like, um, a you're paying like three hundred and fifty bucks for three days to go watch a bunch of artists that otherwise you wouldn't be able to afford to go watch, right? But then also like. When you're not there for the headliners, it's kind of just fun to wander around and find new stuff. Like, that's what I'm probably going to end up doing uh, the rest of the weekend, because I think uh, Saturday, there's like a couple of like smaller alternative, you know, bands that I kind of really like that are go going on. And then Sunday, there's one band called Flip Turn that's also kind of on the smaller like indie side that um, I think is really good. Obviously, they... <laughs> They moved Chapel Roan from the Saturday lineup to the Sunday lineup, and she's going on um, right before the headliner. We'll see if she if she actually shows up because she just canceled her last festival date. But um, I don't know. It's the ACL is fun if you're kind of just there for the vibe, you know. You know, to that point, the about seeing people for the first time, I saw Drive By Truckers and Wilco for the first time at ACL Fest. I also saw cake for the only time I ever saw cake at ACL Fest. I'll be having some different kind of cake and probably seeing some different kind of ACLs, uh, snap and tear and pop. Uh, <laughs> that's a that's an old guy joke if I ever heard one. Well, uh, and to that point, uh, I say Rocket Man. Let's go Rocket Man for the Rockets. I mean, come on, you know, why if they're not doing that, you're again, they're getting it wrong. That's another guy that went to the Robinson School of Makeup application. <laughs> Elton John. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my gosh. We are we are really off of the rails. Yeah. Uh <laughs> all right. Uh that's some good thoughts, some good feedback. DJ, enjoy your uh concert weekend, uh your mega concert weekend. Oh, thank you. And uh Chad, you gonna take us out with a little post lewd? What are you doing? Are you just keeping the beat? <laughs> All right, see y'all later. <laughs> <laughs>